Ahoy there, you space junkies. Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Kevin, and we're going to pick things back up where we left off with our Friday episode last week. About an hour after we published that video, the FAA announced yet another delay to the draft PEA they were supposed to release at the end of this month. They're now targeting April 29th to release it, which will allow them the time to include responses to comments and complete consultation and coordination with agencies at the local, state, and federal level. For those of you who engage and are informed about politics, you're already well aware that the government, especially this government, likes to release bad news on Fridays because the weekend's right around the corner and people just don't pay attention to it. So that's why the FAA waited to the very last minute of the work week to release this, but we're talking about it now because it's important. Elon did say that they are targeting May for the first orbital launch attempt for Starship Super Heavy, probably ship 24 seven if it was my guess, but this delay by another month may end up pushing that more realistically toward June, maybe July. It's too early to say at this moment. But that doesn't mean things aren't getting done down there in Starbase, Texas. RGV aerial photography snapped this pic of Booster 4 being lifted off the orbital launch table and placed onto a separate mount. But at this time, it's still down there at the launch site. Take note of the arrangement of the aero covers for the COPVs because we're gonna talk about Booster 7 right now. Booster 7, which is now expected to be the first first stage to push Starship to orbit, was moved out of the high bay during the making of our Friday episode. I did manage to sneak a little snippet in there of that. But just so you're aware, it, it was moved right back into the high bay. SpaceX has done this kind of thing before, but it, it made me laugh because it was kind of in sync with the, you know, the Friday announcement of the FAA's delay of their draft PEA. So it was almost as if SpaceX moved it out because we're going to test it. And then the, the FAA was like, no, no, we're delaying this another month. Okay, we'll move it back in. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it just kind of made me laugh thinking about it. So in regard to the COPVs, these photos are provided by Starship Gazer. You can now see the obvious changes made with this newer generation Starship booster. They're all lined up on the left-hand side there in a more aerodynamic fashion. So just one of the, I guess you could say, minor improvements made to the ship. There have been several. And trust me, there will be a lot more by the time we actually land people on Mars. Something else I just want to quickly go over with you, this screenshot provided by RGV Aerial Photography, a possible payload dispensing section of Starship, maybe for future Starlink missions. We know with the upper stage of the Falcon 9, it does this end over end rotation to allow that centrifugal force to push the Starlink payloads out all at one time. But as local John Randolph talked about in our chat section during one of our live videos, uh, SpaceX is looking at the possibility of using like a PEZ dispenser um, technique to eject those Starlink satellites one at a time out into, out into orbit. So that top slot there may be what that's for. The door below it may be a way for them to load those Starlink satellites onto the rocket. But to be clear, this is all just projection. This may even have something to do with Artemis. And speaking of, the White House just released their budget request for 2023, and they want 26 billion in discretionary funding for NASA. If approved, 7.5 billion of that would go toward Artemis of which almost one and a half million would go toward the human landing system, which would be Starship Lunar Lander, and the new sustaining lunar development contract that we just spoke about in our last episode, which my guess would be Blue Origin. <clears throat> and of course, NASA knows what they're talking about when they say first woman, because they have a bunch of biologists working for them. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? I'm not a biologist. In NASA's PowerPoint PDF, they released an updated Moon to Mars planning manifest which reserves the first SpaceX uncrewed lunar demo for 2024, and then a crewed lunar demo for 2025, and nothing at all for 2026. And then it seems their attention starts to shift more toward the uh, secondary human lander, as well as building the gateway. Starship lunar landings will probably still be a thing come 2028, might be the only thing, and Elon's currently expecting SpaceX to land people on Mars with Starship come 2029. The crew of Polaris Dawn, which is the first of two crewed Dragon missions, which will culminate in the first manned starship to Earth orbit, are excited to start some EVA training this summer. Their commander, Jared Isaacman, explained that further updates for the mission will occur after Acts 1 and Crew 4 launch. Now that he has more experience with Dragon, in fact, now that I think about it, he'll be the first astronaut to actually ride Dragon twice. They'll be focusing less on the capsule and the rocket and more on the research for their specific mission as well as the EVA ops and mission-specific sims. And there will also be a documentary, so that's pretty cool. Documentaries are sweet, brah. Watching documentaries are like reading really good books, only better because you don't have to put any effort into it. Reuters broke a story yesterday that SpaceX is ceasing all production of their Crew Dragon capsules. 
They spoke to SpaceX's president, Gwen Shotwell, who said, quote, we are finishing our final capsule, but we still are manufacturing components because we'll be refurbishing. And she added that the company would retain the capability to build more capsules if need arises in the future, but contended that, quote, fleet management is key. And former SpaceX executive Garrett Reisman said, quote, the goal is to get more and more like aircraft operations where you can take the vehicle after it lands, fill it back up with gas and oxygen, and go again very rapidly. Starship, if it achieves its design objectives, would be able to affordably replace everything that Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon can do. And of course, that's the whole point of Starship, right? You want that 100% rapid reusability where you can get to the point, like Elon said, of launching two, three Starships a day. And when I read this article, the first thing I took away from all this was confidence. It should be obvious by now that Elon and SpaceX clearly see Starship as the future. But still, the Falcon team is making excellent progress. They're aiming for 60 launches this year. They're also expecting over 4,200 Starlink satellites in operation within 18 months, which is about two thirds of all active satellites of Earth. And to Elon's delight, 69 launches isn't out of the question. SpaceX's next mission though is Transporter 4, whom's 40 spacecraft, including CubeSats, Microsats, PicoSats, hosted payloads, and an orbital transfer vehicle have been encapsulated into Falcon 9's fairing last week. That payload's currently scheduled for liftoff on April 1st, and uh, we'll find out eventually if that's a big old fat whopper. Axe 1 has been pushed a few more days to April 6th because NASA wants to do the wet dress rehearsal for SLS on April 3rd. But uh, check out the busy launch cadence for next month. At this time, we're looking at at least six Falcon launches, two of them crewed and one of them out of Vandenberg. Although we don't have an honorable mention for today, I just want to inform you that Blue Origin is targeting Thursday morning for NS-20, the launch of the next crewed New Shepard mission to suborbital space. Now, I do plan on going live for this on Locals, so if you'd like to be a member and join us, you can check out the link in the description below. You all have a nominal work week, and until Friday, Godspeed.